Hello boys and girls, on today's episode we're going to be um, creating the ultimate defensive fort against slug and snail, our old enemy, the old enemy, slugs and snails. Also in this episode we're going to be doing some um, hygiene cleanliness, sorting out with the greenhouses and making them all prepared and pretty and, um, and fragrant um, so that we can get some productive growing going, going on in there over the winter. But it's all going to be about the greenhouse today and the uh, slug fort. You'll see. You'll enjoy it, I think, this slug fort. I hope you enjoy it anyway and you get some uh, good tips from it uh, to prevent the slugs from eating your crops whilst growing over winter indoors. Also, as I say, uh, you'll be getting some cleaning tips and maintenance tips for your, for your greenhouses. How to maintain and look after them. Um, keep the jays fluid that we're going to be using away from your uh, from your grape vines. And that's the only uh, the only downside to to jays fluid that we're going to be using is it can be detrimental to the grape vine. It'll kill it off. So keep that away. But you'll see in this episode there's a lot going on, and I've earned my coffee today. So please comment, like, and subscribe. Okay, boys and girls, I'll see you in a bit. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda, a.k.a. Tony. Lots to do today. Lots of winter jobs and um, general tidying up and tarting up down here on the Little Farm. You're never stuck for a job down here, and it's all for the benefit of the plants and for the mind and for the self nobody died of hard work well a few did I suppose didn't they but um, moderate work is good for you good for the soul and uh, good for the body right and the mind so um, we're gonna crack on now with a few a few different tasks the main one being I want to grow in this I want to grow inside this over winter and to do that, I'm going to have to clean that out, clean it all up and make several little amendments to it um, to assist and make life easier um, with, the, with the plant husbandry over the next sort of four or five months. So that's the main job I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be sorting that greenhouse out, clearing out all the weeds, getting it as prepared as possible for um, the brassica plants that I'm going to be putting into that greenhouse over winter and also we're going to be uh, we're going to be doing some slug prevent slug prevention as well um, prevention is better than cure so um, we'll show you all that in this ep in this episode okay it's a bit cold this morning and it's a bit wet so uh, the indoor jobs are the ones that you want to be concentrating on when the weather conditions are bad. So that's what we're going to be getting on with today. All right. So we'll see you in a bit, boys and girls. Okay. So this is the Lady Farmer's 8 by 6 greenhouse. So it's 6 feet that way and 8 feet across the face. Quite like the setup of that greenhouse, actually. I like, I like the look of it with the slightly sloping sides. That was already on the plot when we got the plot. Um, and at our allotment society... If you take over a plot and there are already structures on it, you can pay a fee, um, a sort of donation towards the society and um, and retain the structures. And that's what we did. I think it cost us about 50 quid altogether with that greenhouse and the, and the little uh, black shed at the side of it. Anyway, that's besides the point. That's going to be cleaned. It was cleaned at the beginning of the year. It's going to be cleaned again now. So I'm going to start from the top on the outside and work my way in. Okay, so I'm just going around quickly checking, seeing what the, uh, the general condition is. Um, you can see that the, on, it's on the inside, no, it's on the outside actually. That there's a sort of a green. Um, it's not moss. It's like a fur degree that's building up of algae on the outside of that. So initially, I'm going to give it a really good washing down because I've not got a hop up to get up with a scrubbing brush. I'm going to use the yard brush there. To give it an initial wash down with that, and uh, and get rid of the, uh, the the bulk of it before I use uh, I use other means. So that's the first step: is to just get the get the get the majority of it off using the the yard brush for the extra reach, 
and the safety aspects of being on the ground while you're doing it. You're not hovering over the greenhouse while you're cleaning off the top of it. Okay, so it's had a scrub down with the yard brush and it's also had a spraying with the hose pipe. We've still got the, uh, the water on luckily enough up at um, the Eden plots. So I've used my hose with a jet spray on the jet, the jet setting. And what I've done with that is I've sprayed up underneath. I'll just show you. These overlap these water, these panels. Um, and so if you go like this, you can get a lot of the verdigris and the algae from inside. Now that forces the water pressure forces up between the gap in the panes and of course the muck goes on the inside then but we're going to clean the inside shortly but that gets in between the, the difficult to reach parts Joe uses a knife but water pressure is just as good if not better really um, to get in between there and clean out and as you can see where I've done that you can barely see the uh, the muck anymore. Okay, so that's what I've been on uh, with the last uh, sort of 20 minutes or so. Now we're going to go inside the greenhouse. Okay, so as we take a look inside the greenhouse, we can see that I've got my uh, shade netting on the roof. That just clips into place. If you saw the episode when I was actually installing that, they clip into place with these. I don't know if you can make that out, actually. The little clips. Like that. Shade netting clips. So I'm just going to retain those inside this little, uh, little cup. I'm going to get the netting down. And then once that's done, we'll start off on the, uh, on the grapevine and clear that off. Okay. Now just by cleaning the outside of the glass and um, removing the shade netting you can see already that the clarity of the light in here is much improved. Now I'm going to get rid of that um, foliage from the, from the grapevine and clip it all back, get rid of all the leaves and, uh, and trim it. And once I've done that I'm also going to be getting rid of all the weeds that are knocking around, moving all the stuff from off the shelving and generally giving it a good clear out so we can see uh, we can see where we're at, basically. Let the dog see the rabbit. Okay. Okay, now everything's been, everything's been cleared away from the inside. Um, I've even took, took the shelves out because the shelves are going to be dried off in here. Scrubbed with a, um, a wire brush and then repainted. <coughs> All you do now, really, basically, is get some of the Jay's fluid. Now the Jay's fluid's been there for years and years. It's a disinfectant and cleaner for outdoor use. Uh, you can use it in dog kennels, uh, chicken coops, uh, stables, and greenhouses and glass houses. Uh, now with this, there, there are directions on the bottom, on the on, on the back of the pack, um, which give you the sort of measurements of of, of the fluid that you're going to be putting in to your mix when you're going to be doing your disinfecting now I put um, five litres in there in a bucket so into that five litres we're going to put 35 millilitres of the J's fluid now I've got a measuring jug okay so about halfway down that dilution table um, you've got the greenhouse cold frames clutches seed boxes plant pots cleaning. We're going to be cleaning all of those today with the J's. So I've got five litres into a bucket. That's a five litre water bottle so I know that when I fill to that we've got five litres of water. So I'm going to fill that from the hose. Okay, get me hose. Oh. Fingers getting in the way of the camera there, isn't it? Again. So that's just going to be filled up. Then we know that we've got five litres and we're doing it correctly.
I'm favouring the tap water for this one because we know it's sterile, it's not got any impurities in it or very few impurities in it and pathogens to start with ok that's our 5 litres all I'm going to do now is tip that into the bucket a clean bucket I'm going to say that's about right it doesn't actually go down um, below the 100 millilitres that which can make that out even but I think that's around about 35-40 millilitres because the um, the jug sort of curves in at the bottom and that's like halfway between the bottom and the 100 and because of the curvature I'm going to say that's about 40 millilitres we're going to go with that boys and girls what do you think no other option anyway but that's going to be poured into there now if we look on the side of the J's fluid there you can see that there's a corrosive symbol so um, we're using the rubber gloves when we're handling anything like that you should be uh, you should be cautious that you need to wear any safety equipment that um, that's deemed necessary so um, I've got my goggles on over my glasses and I've also got these rubber gloves on or I will be having them on in about two seconds uh, while I'm handling this so the J's is into the five litres let's get the gloves on now the stiff hand brush in there I've made a bit of a boo-boo there I forgot I thought I was recording but wasn't so I've done the vast majority of it in fact I've done it all really um, but yeah so basically you work it in with the stiff brush and get down be between your crevices that you've missed slide that along actually that glass uh, clip slide that back along and just work it all over inside there and then we'll rinse it off then in the end with the uh, with the jet spray better off with both hands and using my right hand here boys and girls I'll carry on I'll crack on I'll finish this off got the uh, J's treatment as well some buckets that I found in there and uh, and also that tomato growing tray the watering tray for the tomatoes that's had a good uh, a good shower and a good clean ah smells like a hospital it's pretty clean and tidy and disinfected in here now. we found some snails eggs which we've dispatched along with the snails they've all gone for the long bath however what we're planning on doing in here is growing some um, overwintering calabrese in the form of kale, spring cabbage and um, purple sprouting broccoli. Well yeah it's like a hospital in here now, all disinfected, clean tidy, good visibility, good uh, light quality coming into the, uh, into the greenhouse. Jobs are good. Now boys and girls, let's build a protective slug fort. Right, for this one, you need two tomato watering trays, three Asda cut flower buckets of the same size, um, some of this, table salt, 40p, Tesco, whatever you want to buy it from, you can get it cheaper obviously elsewhere probably, and uh, uh, some sand, some damp sand. I've just brought the pallet in from outside. Now that pallet's going to have a um, growing tray on top of it. It's going to have two growing trays on top of it. Um, to, to, to put the buckets in that we've got the, the, the sort of um, uh, brassicas in. So I've just adjusted it a little bit just to make sure that it's all flat and level, which it is now. You can see the bubble there. Yeah. And then we can put the, the tray on. 
the tray goes on there. And then, <coughs> with it being flat and level, um, when we put the secondary tray on, which I'll show you in a second, in fact, I'll, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me just show you what I'm doing. So I've sort of half filled the buckets with the damp sand. They're inside the first of the watering watering trays. I'm then going to apply the table salt. British is best, of course, every time. And, uh, all we're doing, all we're doing here, is we're putting the salt around. Now these have all been cleansed and washed. So we know there's no initial slugs on there. I just caught my bum on something at the back there. It's besides the point, isn't it? Hey, Into the tray, the salt will go. Like that. Doesn't matter if it gets damp, does it? The slugs are not going to like it whether it's wet or dry, that. We know now, or we're pretty sure, I mean, if a slug gets through this barrier, it's a commando slug that's impervious to the salt. And there's not many of them about. So onto that, the reason the sand is in the buckets is to give it stability. So we know it's flat and level. It's in the tray. The salt's in the tray. The buckets go in with the sand, the damp sand. That gives it weight and stability. And all we do then is we put this one on top. Like that. Further buckets, when we get the little plants, these little brassica plants that you can see here. So the plants will be going into those, uh, those top buckets. Now, I'm going to be putting two in each one of those setups, because hopefully they're going to be big and large and fat, plenty of leaf growth on them. Uh, then that will. I'm going to have to get a different. Well, I'm going to be getting a different camera shortly. Um, they should be up here. Great big beasts of plants, and I think I can get about ten or twelve in here. I'm going to put a couple more down there. Similar sort of a setup. I'm only using the the the, the sort of a um, pallet just because I've got the pallet. It lifts it up off the ground and. I'm just doing it because I've, I've got it basically, but you could level out the floor and just put the tray in As long as the tray is there and it's got the salt in, I can't see how this uh, As I say, you'd have to be some sort of super duper commando, primo, top of the range slug to get through that Get onto the bucket, crawl up, come underneath, get through the water that's going to be in the watering tray Up the side of the bucket again and onto the bloody um, brassica You'd have to be some sort of stubborn and... Uh, Fantastic slug to do that. So this is a hopefully this is going to work. I can't see why this wouldn't work. You can't put the salt obviously into the watering tray that you're going to be using for the plants. But with that setup, I think it's going to be pretty bulletproof. That just got to make sure that the uh, when the plants do grow, hopefully to big full fruition, the leaves are not going to be touching the sides because then the slug can get on it. Get on it from the from the from the window side, can't it? And it can get to it that way, I'm guessing. But otherwise, I think that will work. In fact, I might move that. I'm going to move that tray. Right, so I've moved that tray over a little bit. So when the when the leaves do grow to a couple of feet, hopefully, it's not going to be touching the windows. We're away at the back there, and we're away at the side. Get another tray there, another tray there, two trays potentially here. You could probably get maybe maybe two trays on there. You get at least eight, I think, in here, growing in this eight foot by six over winter. I've got my fingers crossed, boys and girls, but uh, I hope you like that idea. I think it's a good one. Remains to be seen, doesn't it? But as I say, if, even if the bottom water trough does get damp and wet, the saline solution in that water will certainly put the slugs off. If it doesn't drown and kill them, it'll certainly turn their noses away, won't it, that? I'm guessing. What do you think? 
Hey, what do you think? I mean, I suppose with that you could even use just house bricks or something, couldn't you? For the tower bit. But um, I've used the buckets with the sanding because that's what I had. And also I'm thinking that that might actually be a deterrent as well for the small rodents like mice and what have you. If you were growing peas in the buckets, you could do it the same sort of a way. And the mice wouldn't be able to get to them either, would they? Because of the height. They'd struggle. An athletic rat might do it, but uh, I think the mice would struggle with that, wouldn't they? Yeah, let me know what you think. Let us know in the comments below. If you like it, give it, a, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. It's up to you. If you want to be a miserable get, isn't it? If you really do like what we do, please subscribe to our channel. If you're not already a subscriber. And make sure that you hit the all bell. When you hit the bell for bell notifications, it'll give you some options. Uh, click on the all and then you won't miss another exciting episode down here at the little farmer's farm with me, Guru Mafinda. You've been wonderful, fantastic, fragrant as always. We love you all, and if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. It's Thursday today, tomorrow's Friday, we're hurtling into the weekend, and there'll be lots of other jobs and little projects that we're going to be getting on with, and we're going to do catch-ups on our growing as well. So, uh, yeah, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time. All right, boys and girls. Love you to bits. Bye-bye now.